Good morning, everybody. First of all, congratulations, Lori, Jeff, and Chuck, for really organizing this program today and also doing whatever you did with the weather gods so that it didn't ice over this morning. But what I want to do is just share with you how pleased I am that all of you are here because in the state of Maryland, you may or may not know that there are over 500 life science companies. Now, the vast majority of these companies have an average number of employees of somewhere, Chuck, 12, 12 yeah, something 12, like yeah. that. So it means that the vast majority of them are very early stage. I was thinking about all the mistakes that we had made and how can I share what we learned from those with you so you don't make the same mistakes. So how can I impart that knowledge on you? So what I just think about, what is really important to you? If you think about what's really important to you, yeah. quality, obviously in the business that you're in, quality probably has to be number one because if you have a really good cost to your product, people aren't going to buy it if your quality is not there because we, in the biotech industry, we're looking at products that go into people. So quality is first and foremost. You have to deal with a lot of regulatory inspections and filings. You have compliance. And then, of course, productivity is very important because that's going to drive your cost and how fast that you can get to the market. All right. So here's the thing. I'm going to go over some things that uh, Lori alluded to, uh, describing a bit about what Lean is. But also, I'm going to focus not so much on the tools that she was saying we're going to touch on that, but some of the things that are holding organizations back from really knocking out of the park. Um, so. <clears throat> Excuse me, my, uh, my background in this, uh, I've got two titles up here. I get a chance to see lean getting done in organizations uh, in Maryland, uh, across a wide range of industries, and also uh, outside of that, uh, uh, up, uh, beyond the state lines, and seeing uh, even a broader cross-section of organizations doing lean. So I hope to translate for you exactly, number one, what lean is, and what some of the secrets are to success with it but also to help make the translation, what specifically does this mean to you, and how do you apply it successfully inside a bioscience company? Um, the outline of my presentation is I have to talk a little bit about the regulatory authority, where we get to do what we do, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. I know reading regulations is not that exciting, however, you need to know and understand when we ask uh, certain questions and uh, when we go on inspection and we request that you are manufacturing the subject drug substance or drug product in the application is because it is specified in the regulations. Once in a while we'll get a question about that. Why do you have to come while we're in operation? We're going to, again, talk a little bit about process analytical technologies in, this, in the context of the more encompassing philosophy called quality by design. This is the classic definition of PAT from the FDA guidance uh, from 2004. Uh, speaking of PAT in the context of a system for, and this is very important, designing, analyzing, and controlling manufacturing through uh, timely, and it's very critical, timely, measurement of critical quality performance attributes. Uh, certainly we've uh, used DOE in many cases to look at process yields, um, evaluating optimal plate coating conditions also, uh, and now uh, marketing data. And I have just a, a quick shot of, um, uh, and you, you're starting to see this in the literature now where a lot of marketing organizations are using DOE. This is an example where um, they wanted to look at what were the factors that attracted customers to a website. Um, so here were the five factors, um, and here were the different levels that they were looking at. Within the process risk, one of the, one of the uh, key this, uh, statistical tools is the failure modes effects analysis, or the FMEA. It's a tool that you really use to identify which of the process steps within the processes that we're looking at have the greatest risk of failure and the impact of those failures. Now, I'm going to go through uh, just a quick slide and show you what that looks like. But I also had the great fortune this morning when I came to sit down that I sat down at a table with someone who's been running FMEAs in the business for the last year. And I'm going to ask Tim just to uh, talk for just a second about what they've experienced as they've been running these FMEAs. So uh, it's always great to walk into a presentation and you got somebody to step up and help you out with it, you know, from the crowd. So I appreciate that, Tim. I don't think you knew I was going to do that to him. 
But um, when we look at failure uh, modes of effects analysis, what we really look at is a tool that helps identify process steps, the potential failure to be a failure effect, or what could happen if that failure did occur, the severity of that effect occurring, the potential causes, the occurrence or likelihood of occurrence, current controls in effect, if there are any, the ability to detect it, and we create what's called a, a risk priority number, or, or a, a uh, actually quantified number that identifies um, a scalability for that failure mode. Yeah, I'm Tim Pinya. Um, I'm currently a senior director of uh, Biosciences. So Bioscience is actually started uh, 10 years, um, at 1999 by five funders, each one like uh, invest $10,000, so it's uh, $50,000 at the basement. And the technology at the beginning is, uh, at that time, 1999, microarray is very uh, popular and uh, also very advanced technology. Uh, yes, I'm Steve Cuson, CEO of Seguro. And my experience with, uh, well, what we call the GE cycle time reduction goes back actually to 1991 when I was general manager of R&D for GE Silicon, which at the time was a $400 million business. And I was given the assignment to grow new product sales with no additional resources because they had put a bunch of money in the business before and never got anything out of it. At the same time, GE was introducing to manufacturing cycle time reduction in the appliance business. And if people follow GE, they probably heard about that in the early 90s. We were the first business in GE to apply it to new product commercialization. But to our senior management, here's what it's all about, and here's how it's practiced. And we sent several, um, out of a, a group of maybe 60 or 70 employees, we had three people go to the lean facilitator year long process, and each in a different aspect in order to really try to ingrain this on people, and that was essential. And even with all of that, it was a constant battle, because the resistors out there, and I like your term, the resistors, boy, they, they were tough, and they were always rallying support to their cause for why we shouldn't do this. And they were very subversive, and we had to root them out wherever possible and get them in a stranglehold and, you know, drag them along kicking and screaming or get them out. Get them out. But it was great, and it, I think it added a lot to the bottom line. I think it added a lot of value to the company. Uh, it helped us retain customers. And so, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're the CEO or you're just looking for someone who's trying to get a raise uh, because there's more money on the bottom line. That lean was an essential part of our process and better proposition. I'll leave you.